We're back on another Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. I'm Derek Rackley with my fellas Dave Archer and DJ Shockley. We're not going to get into a whole lot of pleasantries to start because I want to dive into everything. But before we do that, fellas, let's give them a quick uh, quick hitter about what's going to happen today. We're going to talk about our key fix. We're going to give you guys the keys to the Bentley, the Mercedes, the mm. Jeep, whatever one it is of the Atlanta Falcons, and you tell us what's your key fix, something you that got you one can of those, fix right? right now. Yeah, you got one of those. Yeah, maybe used yeah. to. Uh, some <laughs> lessons learned from the game. Uh, there's obviously a lot of lessons that could be learned from that game, and then we're going to maybe take a step back and have the guys talk about maybe an experience that they had in a lopsided game like that, but more or less, how do you transition your mind and move on to the next week just like Atlanta has to do? We'll talk a little bit about the divisions. Obviously, Cam Newton back in the division with the Carolina Panthers, and then we will look ahead and talk about the Patriots as it comes up in two days if you're listening to this on Tuesday. Very quick game for a uh, quick turnaround for the Atlanta Falcons on Thursday Night Football. So, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. Your key fix. And I'm sure everybody out there watching has got their key fix. Mm -hmm. One thing that they would change right now with the Atlanta Falcons. I'm sure there's probably a number of things when you come off a performance like that and you're still kind of trying to find your way. But the task here is one mm -hmm. key fix. Dave, let's start with you. Yeah, and these are kind of fantasy p changes because, to a certain extent, it's going to take uh, it's going to take some, some personnel. So we won't we won't go dive into that. But I would like to be able to run the football. Yeah, if we could run the football with some degree of success, I think it changes the dynamic of how you defend yeah, Atlanta right, Falcons. Right. Yeah, like it, DJ. What about you? I'm jumping on the other side, and I think it's been an issue and something that we've tried to. Remedy, it's the pressure on the quarterback. I think up front, both line of scrimmages are something that we have talked about for a while, and I think we're still struggling in that category. I think Grady uh, was the only one who maybe had a pressure on the quarterback uh, this past Sunday. Um, I know he had a tackle for loss, but we need more guys getting after the quarterback. Got to find that guy or two in a yeah. four-man rush situation that gets after the quarterback causes them to get rid of the football early, something along those lines. Dave, I'm going to kind of piggyback on yours. I'm old school. I like to run the ball too, but pass protection I feel like needs to be mm. better. There's mm. just been too many times where you're seeing a guy come off the line of scrimmage and maybe it's a quick swim move, it's a grab and pull, and they're immediately in the backfield and Matt's having to try to get rid of the football, not even having a chance to get through his progressions. Yeah. We understand it's going to happen occasionally. Mm. Somebody's going to get beat at the line of scrimmage. It can't happen four, five, six, and seven times throughout a game and you expect to be able to move the ball through the air. So those are some of our key fixes. You see where it is at the line of scrimmage, defensively, offensively. Uh, can't really dispute that. So, Dave, I'm going to come right back to you. What did you learn from the Dallas game? Because as the players and the coaches go sit down, review the tape, this is probably one of those where it's mm. a quick review and let's move forward. But you have to review because you got to find out where you made mistakes and how you can get better. So what did you learn from that performance? Maybe it's something specific as far as X and O's. Maybe it's more big picture as far as the matchup between Atlanta and Dallas. But what did you learn? Well, I think that I, I've tried to be a cup as half full. And in this situation, maybe it's a cup quarter full after that, <laughs> after that game. There's no question. It's hard to find something to hang your hat on. But what I am going to hang my hat on is the Atlanta's ability to swell up against the run on the defensive side of the ball. We've seen it in back-to-back -back weeks now. Pollard and Zeke, the two running backs for Zeke Elliott and, and Tony Pollard, the running backs for Dallas, 25 carries, 84 yards. You, that's a winning effort, okay? Yeah. That's less than four yards. I can do the math there. That's less than four yards. Yep. About 3.5 yards a carry. That followed up from last weekend. Remember, we talked about Alvin Kamara had seven carries, 43 yards in the first half. The second half, he had six carries, almost the same, six and seven. He had eight yards in the second half. They limited the run game, even though it was the same amount of carries. That carried over this weekend. Now, obviously, they were able to have some success throwing the ball. But as I begin to look at some of the changes with Anthony Rush and Vodders and some of these guys are a little bit bigger body guys on the line of scrimmage, it's showing a little bit of dividend there when it comes to uh, stopping the run game. Yeah, and no no getting around the fact that Carolina was the one that really kind of sure. put things out there. We've got to be able to stop the run if you plan on playing really good defense. DJ, what did you learn from that game? What stuck out to you that needs to be fixed, that needs to be addressed, that whatever it ends up coming to you? You know what I, I love? Arch talked about some of the nuances inside the ball game. 
I'm thinking more of the big picture stuff that you talked about yep. coming in, and more big picture stuff is it's kind of what we talked about last week. We had you know one step forward and we went two steps back. In this ball game, I felt like we took a couple more steps backwards, and I, what I mean is we took a couple steps backwards. It's not stacking performances together like. Mm-hmm. We were usually a team that went on the road and played pretty well. I mean, obviously, you had four, four wins on a row. You thought you'd feel good about that. And you just didn't have the same kind of energy, I thought, the same kind of intensity. You didn't play with the same kind of vitriol that you wanted to go out and get a win. And for me, it's if you want to be a better football team, if you want to show as we're getting into our 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th game of the season, you got to start seeing – repeat performances of good performances put together on both sides of the ball or even, you know, in all three phases. And I don't think this past week showed that we were taking the right steps going forward. And I thought we were going that way. I thought we were, you know, obviously finishing games the right way. But this was a performance that I thought we took a couple steps backwards because we didn't put together repeat performances. Yeah, some things that come to mind, we hadn't really talked about the bad special teams plays throughout the course of the entire season, and that ends up kind of rearing its ugly head in this game. And yeah, unfortunately, that stuff happens. You give up a Bach punt, but like it just shows how things can snowball quickly when you start to have the errors on special teams. And Dave, you talked about building on successful run-stopping defense, I thought we also saw some pass defense holes. There was quite a few times that the Cowboys were running wide open into some open zones, really not contested like it had been in weeks past. So let's let's kind of move this forward a little bit because, Dave, you made a great point before we started. You said if you play in this league long enough, you're going to have some games where you absolutely get wiped out. And I'll start with this one. This goes back to 2004. We were 5-2 and two to start the season. So we were a pretty darn good team. Like we were already looking about playoffs, so on and so forth. We took a trip to Kansas City and absolutely got blown out of Arrowhead Stadium. Dave, 56 <laughs> to 10, I think that's what it was. Yeah, I called Dave it. was calling the game. <laughs> the best thing I about unfortunately that game was, was the milkshakes and the press. Yeah. That was always good. Dave said the best part was that. I didn't even get no milkshakes. I'm just down <laughs> on the sideline. You didn't get one to go was, and then when you left. Yeah, we're just down there getting pounded. We huh. gave up eight rushing touchdowns in that good game. Four to is. Priest Holmes, four to Derek Blaylock. And that's like the hardest way to lose a game when somebody just runs yeah. all over you. Okay, so that happened. What happened the next week? We went back on the road, played the Denver Broncos. We ended up beating them. Dave mentioned we got out of there right before a snowstorm. I don't remember all this. Your mind is just like crazy sharp, Arch. <laughs> well, so I appreciate that. Wanted to get home. But that was just <laughs> like, how do, you, how do you take a huge loss yeah. like that, yeah. right? Do you let it affect the rest of your season and end up losing and losing and losing? Well, that didn't happen for us back in 2004. We wiped it away. We won four straight games. We had a bye week sandwiched in there, but we won four straight games after that. So, Rack, what do you remember about that week? It's so it's so eerie because when I was listening to you interview Arthur Smith after the game, I remember the things that he said was the same things mm. that Jim Morris said. Is like, this is going to happen. You got to learn from it. And how quickly can we forget about it and move mm. on? Mm-hmm. And sometimes as players, you find out what your leadership is because the next day you come back into the building or you go out into the field, what's the attitude of the team? Yeah. Mm. Is yeah. everybody excited? Is everybody ready to practice? Are they ready to get better? Are they ready to play the next opponent? Or are they still dwelling on last week? And what If I remember correctly, we hit the practice field with a pep in our step and we were ready to go compete. Like that. And it was like, like you don't that. think about the last game. And that's one thing that, that I try to tell my daughters in their sports, and I'm sure you guys have told this to many other people, is football is a game of a short-term memory. Yeah, if you be. don't have one or if you don't learn that skill, it's going to be hard to have success. And you guys have been able to do it. Right. Before uh, Arch jumps in here, one thing that I heard, and we, we, we talked about it the last couple of weeks about the leaders on this team mm-hmm. and how they go about their business and – you talked about having you know a chance to talk to some of these guys after the game, and I heard Grady get up after the game, and the one one thing he said was, "This game only counts as one." And as tough as it was, as you know, as as know, hard as it is to look at the box score, as frustrating as it was, he understands that this one game will not define us as a team, and. I know that was the message inside the team. I know that was the message that uh, Arthur Smith was given. And the fact that he came out and presented that to his team and said, hey, I'm going to come back to work and be ready to go, that speaks volume. So I hope that the leaders of the team take that same kind of – that you guys had after that big-time loss in Kansas City 
and it transfers into this week where you don't allow it to beat you twice. I mean, we've heard it all uh, a bunch of times. you got to flush this one. You can't let this one beat you twice. And it's the truest statement you've ever had because yeah. guys can go out and have practice on Monday and Tuesday and still be thinking about Sunday. Yes. When you got a game coming up here on Thursday where things matter – and you got a whole new opponent, a whole new guy who's going to stand in front of you, and he's not going to care that you just got your butt whooped in <laughs> yeah. Dallas. He wants to whoop you again too. Right. So the fact that you don't allow that to beat you twice, I think is a huge, huge part of just getting through this. And we said it earlier, hey, you're going to watch that film, you're going to move on. But the next next thing is you do is think about, hey, that one game, that's gone, that doesn't matter. Just like if you go with it, you get a win, you got to move on from that one just like you do with a loss. Arch, this ever happened to you, and do you remember <laughs> – what happened Look at the afterwards. smile. Look at the yeah. smile. Are you, I, are you smiling? I hate to say, those, those teams yeah. that I played on, we had a couple of these, but uh, certainly one sticks out. Ironically enough, we went to Kansas City in my second year, my first year as a starter, uh, about midway through the year, a little past midway, we played at Kansas City. And Kansas City beat us 38-10, to 10, I think, and, and really wasn't that close. I yeah. threw a pick six. I didn't, you know, I didn't do anything. I helped contribute to the problem yeah. in the game. But it was a Arch, mindset that did you you, you, didn't, were, you didn't pull a Teddy Bridgewater on the pick six, right? No, you actually attempted to make the tackle. Oh yeah, you got to go yeah. try to make the play. Okay. Now he ran off and left me. The guy ran like four <laughs> four. I mean, it, when you throw that, when you throw the stick route and the guy's coming downhill and picks it on the run, not a lot of you can do with that. Yeah. So I, I gave chase, but it was a it was a weak chase. Love he kinda, the effort. He kind of waved at me on the way. All about the effort. So. How do you respond? We came back the next week and beat the Vikings. Vikings were a pretty good team, came in here to Atlanta uh, and, and beat them and changed the mindset. In fact, won the following weekend as well, put back-to-back -back wins after really kind of an embarrassing loss. And the story is the same that we all can relate. I know it's hard for the fan to listen to when you hear guys say, we got to flush this out of the system because there's another one coming. It only counts one, but that's the way you have – that's the mindset you have to have. If you have any lingering doubts about who you are, lingering ideas about, mm. oh, here we go again, then you will lose the following yep, weekend. Right, it yep. will get you the following weekend. Right. And so all of us, any if you're in this business long enough, this is going to happen to you. And it's probably going to happen to you more than once. Yeah. How do you respond to it? It's the old adage, and I'm sure any fan out there probably had their father or mother say, hey, you got knocked to the ground. How are you going to respond? Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. You got knocked down. You got to respond. Yep. And this uh, it'd be interesting to see. Like you, you'll almost be able to tell in the first quarter, the first couple of drives uh, yeah, in yeah. this game, offensively and defensively on Thursday night. Like where the focus, where the minds at are the players? Are they focused on the New England Patriots, or are they still have some doubt from the Dallas Cowboys? But that just shows couple of guys that have been through it before like how you you could get your butt whooped and then the very next week you can come out and you may have a surprising performance and beat somebody that some folks were thinking that wouldn't happen so let's go ahead and take a a, a step away from the dallas cowboys games i'm sure people that are watching are saying Whew, thank you <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the division a little bit yeah. uh interesting division uh let's start with the buccaneers they played this past weekend and they fall to washington 29 19 dj simple question to you Bumping the road for Tampa Bay, or is this a bigger issue that we're starting to see? You know what? It, to me, it feels like it's starting to be a bigger issue. And when I started to think about why it's a bigger issue, I started to do a little research and see what's going on inside the game. And obviously, their games are going on at the same time. It's hard to watch all of them. But I went back and just looked at some of the numbers. And when you go back and look at their last two ball games, their two losses, they got five turnovers. Mm -hmm. They got two versus Washington with two picks from Brady. You had three versus Saints, two interceptions. You had a fumble in those ball games. They gave up 36 points to the Saints, and then they ran for 152 yards uh, against the Buccaneers. There's issues that's going on there that you don't think that are happening. Washington had five sacks in the ball game. Yeah. So this is a team that's not only getting pushed around a little bit, but they're turning the ball over. And that's not building confidence for the Bucks. Now, we hope that continues, of course. But you look inside the numbers, this is something that you have to kind of worry about because these are things that, you know, when I come up, if I push Arch and he doesn't do anything back, that's a problem. Yeah. And right now, the Bucks are getting pushed around, especially in the run game, and, and that's a huge issue for them. So, uh, if you go forward, you can't turn the ball over and you can't, you know, get pushed around in the run game yeah and we yeah. saw with the falcons game last week about their lack of success on third down 
us football guys can generally point to a few stats. Mm -hmm. If you can't convert on third down, yeah. if you turn the football over, yeah. if you can't protect the quarterback, chances of winning games are going to be hard. Dave, yeah. what, what's your thoughts on Tampa Bay? Do you feel like they get this turned around quickly, or are there bigger issues behind it? Well, when you there's so many numbers that you can put your finger on, but you just talked about conversion down to me is a big one. Uh, the, if you combine the three for three that Washington was on fourth down, they converted 13 of 21 conversion situations. Mm. Now I don't I don't have to be a mathematician. That's well that's over fifty percent. That's winning. If you get in that forty five percentile range, you're winning. Yes, over fifty percent against that defense. They held the ball for thirty eight minutes in the game, and some of it has to do with what Shock's talking about is Tampa's giving opportunities away. They're turning the ball over which in turn puts the other offense back on the field. I can't do anything without the football. Even though Devin White tried to do it, he had 18 tackles and two sacks in the game for that really good Tampa defense. They weren't on the field offensively right. enough to, to, to do any damage. And all of a sudden you look up, and I don't want to start – I don't want to get caught up in the playoff thing unless you guys want to, but they're two games ahead of Atlanta. you got a game with them coming up. Now, mm -hmm. yes, they beat you once, but you got them coming to your building – the Saints are only a game ahead. You got a half game. The Carolinas a half game ahead. This thing is not over by any stretch of the imagination. We're in the midpoint, and this division is gettable because Tampa just showed they're gettable, mm -hmm. and people didn't think they were. Absolutely. So you think about again, try not to bring it up, but a poor game for the Atlanta Falcons, and then we start looking at the division a little bit, and it's not so far stretched that mm -hmm. a lot of people think. So you mentioned Carolina, Dave. Let me go right back to you. They end up picking up Cam Newton, bring mm -hmm. back one of the best players in franchise history. They waste no time getting him involved in the game plan, rushes for a touchdown, throws one. How does that impact Atlanta moving forward as they will match up one more time in December? Yeah, you get to go to Carolina, I believe, December 12. I think we go to Carolina to take them on. I think Cam will be the starter by then. I think he'll be the guy. Joe Brady having to try to put a package of plays in. He did this weekend. Cam ran for one, threw for one. I think he only had four attempts, but he ran the ball a couple times, resulted in two touchdowns. So you can see his effect. He's going to be a red zone threat for them probably this week, next week. But when he gets to Atlanta, I think he's going to be the full-time guy. What he does is he brings to the table the quarterback run game. And Atlanta struggled with that. Remember, Sam Darnold ran for like 60 yards in the game here in Atlanta for Carolina. You go all the way back to week one, Jalen Hurts destroyed Atlanta with the quarterback run. He, he's back to be willing to do that. He had 12 rushing touchdowns last year in what people would call a down year for Cam Newton in that New England offense. So he's still a threat from a, uh, an athlete standpoint. And then, oh, by the way, Christian McCaffrey's back on the field. He touched the ball 23 times in the game for 150 yards. He's a problem as well. Yeah, DJ, you look at Cam and it's like you probably is going to need a few weeks, not to mention to become the starter, but to kind of get his legs and his speed back under him. Even though he scored a touchdown, it kind of looked like he was laboring a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But you guys, you guys mentioned quarterback run game. He presents even a different element mm. because in the red zone, he's like a fullback. I mean, this guy is 6'5", 250, 260 pounds. Yeah. So, again, how does that affect that matchup for Atlanta as they'll face off, which will likely be a pivotal game for the Atlanta Falcons? Well, when you get down in the red zone, not even just in the red zone, when you're out, uh, you know, from the 20s and, and coming in, not many teams really have to account for the quarterback. And when you get down in the red zone – you got all eyes on the quarterback, but you're still not accounting for him in the run game. Now you add a fullback, you add another back in there, you add a, a Christian McCaffrey who could easily slip out into the flat on you when you think you got run game coming from the quarterback. So there are a lot of different matchups in the ball game with Cam in the game, especially in the red zone where you, your senses have to go up. Everything down there is up for you as a defensive player, and they're going to only add to it. This is, you know, Brady's getting his – First time getting his hands on Cam, so you gotta you gotta realize he's gonna have some stuff stored away uh, by the time we think he'll be the starter when Atlanta sees him. So when you get into the red zone, everything's up. Antennas up. Never think that there's something they will not try with Cam down there. Like you said, he's 260 some pounds. He's looking to kind of revive his career as well. So he's gonna be like our say. He's willing to do anything right now to be the guy and become the player that he you know, once was. I think everybody would uh, agree with me here. The one thing Cam does not lack 
is confidence. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. He yeah. runs rush, rushing touchdown, takes his helmet off and screams at the camera, I'm back. Yeah. So that's one thing that you're never going to have to worry about with him. We're never going to get a chance to see this. I'd love to see Dean Pease's game plan from the first time they play Carolina to the next time they play Carolina because there was no Christian McCaffrey and no Cam Newton the first time. I'd love to see those call sheets mm, and how yeah. different they're going to be no between the two meetings. This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on the Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. All right, speaking of looking ahead, let's look to Thursday night because as we talked about, Atlanta's going to flush things out and they're going to face the New England Patriots. I want you guys to tell me how you think this matchup is going to stack up and what Atlanta needs to do other than flushing last Sunday's loss against Dallas. Dave, what needs to happen in this unique matchup against Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots? Well, there's two things for me that have to happen. Number one, you cannot let New England run the football. They had 184 yards rushing against Cleveland. They blew Cleveland out much like Atlanta got – uh, their rear ends handed to them by Dallas. They beat Cleveland 45-7, to ran for 185 yards in the game. Ramondre Stevenson, the big kid out of Oklahoma, he's about a 240-pound back. He had 100 yards rushing and a couple of touchdowns. you got to limit the run game and make Mac Jones beat you, and he's proven that he can probably do some of those things to a lot of teams in the league. The youngster's playing well. He's got six wins under his belt. He's got more wins than I think all the other rookie quarterbacks combined, so he's doing a good job. And they're getting back. They're back to playing Bill Belichick type of defense. They're one of the top teams in the league in conversions on third down. So my other key would be stop the run game from a from a defensive standpoint. Make Matt Jones make some of those plays against a fairly nondescript receiver core. Uh-huh. Um, they're still NFL players, so they're going to make plays. But your ability to stay on the field. We talked about conversion rack. You and I are kind of on the same page on the. You've got to stay on the field. You cannot have. You can't play 45 minutes of football. You can't play, you know, 35 minutes of football. That's what Atlanta has done in their losses. Uh, they've even done it in some of their wins. We saw it last weekend, two weekends ago against the Carol uh, against New Orleans, where you kind of let things slip and then you went ahead and right. won the game. This game, it was a 15-minute block against Dallas. You can't have those lulls. Yes. You can't go three and out three times. That can't yep. happen. Yep. DJ, what sticks out for you? The run game is a big part of it for me because when you look back at New England and you look at the highlights, there's a lot of things of Mac Jones throwing the football, of course, and he's going to do that. He's going to make some plays. But in their last three ball games, they rushed for 477 yards. Arch mentioned 184 versus the Browns, 151 versus Carolina, and 142 versus the Chargers. There is a definite, uh, I would say that they want to run the football yeah. to help this young quarterback. Yeah. And here's the other stat that that's going to be interesting, and the Falcons have to be, you know, aware of it. You brought it up. There were a lot of guys running free in our secondary against the Cowboys. Well, this Patriots team, they got 48 plays of 20 plus yards. Explosive. They're going to stretch the field. Yeah. They're going to stretch you vertically, and they're also going to stretch you horizontally with the run game. So this is going to be a a big time matchup, and this is a team coming here with. One of the last four out of five, they're going to be confident coming in. They got a young quarterback feeling good about themselves. So if you don't stop the run and you don't give up the explosive, then you got a chance to be in this ball game and get yourself a win. Well, and you and you look at their situation much like we looked at Atlanta's, where you're only two games behind the division leader in Tampa, and you get to play them. You get to play your other two division opponents as well one more time. So you very much have your destiny in your own hands. New England's looking at the same thing. Buffalo stumbled a couple times. A lot mm-hmm. of people thought Buffalo was going to run away. Yep, yep. You look up, and Buffalo's only a game or so ahead of you. New England's thinking they can go win the division again, and I think they've got a chance to go play Buffalo again too. So uh, it's a big game. This is uh, if you want to start talking about playoff implications and things like that for both these teams. If you as- <laughs> well, if you aspire to be in position in mid-December, these are the kind of games you have to – got to win this game. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people didn't necessarily give da- Atlanta the opportunity to win in Dallas, and maybe that was rightfully so based on the way we played. This is a game you got to win. you gotta, you got to find a way to win this football and keep yourself in, in position. Guys, when, anytime you play or you have a Bill Belichick team coming in, the first thing that comes to my mind is – how Bill is going to attack the opposing team. Mm -hmm. And Bill's big thing is take away what you do best. 
right? So if I'm trying to think like Belichick, my guess would be he's going to come in and try to take away two guys. Apo. Cordell Patterson and Kyle Pitts. <laughs> Okay. Well, he may not have to take away Cordell Patterson True because Cordell's yes. banged up and there's he's a chance up. he's not going to be able to play. So, again, it's can you win those matchups that they're trying to take away? Can Kyle Pitts still find a way to get free? If Cordero plays, can he still find a way to be an impact player? Because the, the broad, TV broadcast showed a great stat of Cordero Patterson. His touches this year versus – average touches his previous career in Atlanta and Arthur Smith has found out that he needs to touch the ball more. So if he plays, does Belichick find a way to keep the ball out of his hands and out of Kyle Pitts? And he's going to say, we need Zacchaeus to beat us. We need Mike Davis to beat us. Russell Gage. That's how, that's what he's going to say. Well, and I think the Cordero Patterson thing is easier said than done. If Cordero plays in the game, he's not going to be able to keep the ball out of his hands. Now, he might be able to shadow him with some guys. We're already seeing, and you guys probably noticed it, and I hope the fan got a chance to see some wide-angle looks. Teams are already responding to Kyle Pitts now. Yep. We saw it this weekend where they're trying to run with a man, but they've got as much as they can. They've got another guy shadowing him from a different level watching him he's almost being doubled he's not completely being bracketed or doubled but they're keeping an eye with two defenders on him that means what you're saying has to happen gage zacchaeus sharp gallman davis they all have to step up and yep. make plays yep. and oh by the I'm way we got to block people up front yes. you talked about it at the opening part of the show You've got to get people blocked so Ryan can make plays. Yeah, so there, that's that's a number of different things. And, guys, it's just cleaning up all the little things. Special teams has got to be better. Pass protection has got to be better. we got to be able to convert more on third down. When, when, when you're not a team that's humming on all cylinders, we talked about it, the margin for error is very small. So the guys are just going to have to go out, and they're going to have to perform this week on yeah. a short week. Yeah. And, again, flushing everything out of the Dallas Cowboys game. No excuses. Guys, thanks so much for uh, all your insight this week. That's going to wrap things up because we got another game to play here in a couple of days. Yeah, go ahead. Get your handshakes in. By the way, hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for, for joining us on AtlantaFalcons.com, <laughs> YouTube, solid. Spotify, or iTunes. As always, wherever you get your podcast material, we thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week to recap and look ahead. And we'll see where Atlanta Falcons are. Let's go get the dub, baby. Let's Thanksgiving dub. edition, dub. right? Coming up. Yes. How about that? Yeah. See if I still rack, fit you're going to have all the fixings for us next week. Yes. I love, I love it. Yeah. Bring yeah. the tacky rack. All right. You guys uh, have a great <laughs> week. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. We're out.